So the thing that controls how long a method runs is how many times the slope, the function, must be evaluated. For Euler, I only have to evaluate it once. Here, I have to evaluate it twice. Now, roughly speaking, the number of function evaluations will each will give you the exponent. The method that's called rung a cut of fourth order will require four evaluations of slope, but the accuracy will be like h to the fourth. Very accurate. You have the step size, and it goes down by a factor of 16. Great. But you had to do it four, you had to evaluate the slope four times. Suppose instead you had have four times this thing, and what would you have done? You would have decreased it to one sixteenth of what it was. You still, you would increase the number of functions evaluations you needed to four, and you would have decreased the error by a sixteenth. So in some sense, it really doesn't matter whether you use a very fancy method which requires more function evaluation. It's true, the error goes down faster, but you're having to do more work to get it. So anyway, nothing's free. Now, uh, I was, I, there is an RK4. I think I'll skip that since I wouldn't dare to ask you any questions about it. But uh, let me, I just mention it at least because it's the standard. It uses four evaluation. It's the standard method if uh, you don't want to do anything fancier. Uh, it's rather inefficient, but it's very accurate. Standard method, uh, accurate. And uh, you'll see when you use the programs, it's in fact the program which is drawing those curves, the numerical method which draws all those curves that you believe in uh, on the computer screen is the RK4 method. The Runga cut up, I should give them their names. Rangakata fourth order method. Two mathematicians, two, uh, I believe both German mathematicians around the turn of the last century. Uh, Rangakata fourth order method requires four slopes, requires you to calculate four slopes. I won't bother telling you what you do, but it's a procedure like that. It's just a little more elaborate. And you take Two of these, you make up a weighted average for the super slope. <laughs> you use weighted average. What should I divide that by to get the right six? Why six? Well, because if all these numbers were the same, I'd want it to come out to be whatever that common value was. Therefore, you always must divide by, in a weighted average, you must always divide by the sum of the coefficients. So this is the super slope. And if you plug that super slope in uh, to here, you will be using the Rangakata method and get the best possible results. Now, I wanted to spend the last three minutes uh, talking about pitfalls of numerical computation in general. Uh, one pitfall I'm leaving you to, on the homework to discover for yourself. Uh, don't worry, it won't cause you any grief. Just. It'll just destroy your faith in these things for the rest of your life, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> so pitfalls. Number one, you find, you'll find. Let me talk instead briefly about number two, which I'm not giving you an exercise in. Number two is illustrated by the following equation. What could be simpler? This is a very bad equation to try to solve numerically. Now, why? Well, because if I separate variables, uh, why don't I save a little time? I'll just tell you what the solution is, OK? You obviously, you separate variables. Maybe you can do it in your head. The solution will be the solutions will have an arbitrary constant in them, and they won't be very complicated. They will be 1 over c minus x. C is an arbitrary constant, and as you give d different values, you get. Now, what do those guys look like? OK, so here I am. I I'm start out at the point 1, and I start out, I tell the computer 
compute for me the value of the solution at 1, starting out at 1. And it computes and computes a little while. But the solution, how does this curve actually look? So in other words, suppose I say that y of 0 equals 1, uh, find me y of 2. In other words, take a, a nice small step size, use the Runge cut of fourth order method, calculate a little bit, and tell me, I just want to know what y of 2 is. Uh, well, what is y of 2? Oh, well, unfortunately, how does that curve look? The curve looks like this. At that point, it drops to infinity, in a manner of speaking, and then sort of comes back up again like that. What is the value of y? This is the point 1. What is the value of y of 2? Is it here? Is it this? Well, I don't know, but I do know that the computer will not find it. The computer will follow this along and get lost in eternity, in infinity, and see no reason whatever to why it should start again on this branch of the curve. OK, well, we should, can't we predict that that's going to happen somehow and, you know, avoid it? What I should have, you know, the whole difficulty is this is called a singular point. This, this solution has a singularity. In other words, a place where it goes to infinity or becomes discontinuous, maybe has a jump discontinuity. It has a singularity at x equals c. This, in particular, at x equal 1 here. But from the differential equation, there is, where is that c? There is no way of predicting it. Each solution, in other words, to this differential equation has its own private singularity, which only it knows about and where it's going to blow up. And there's no way of telling from the differential equation where that's going to be. That's what makes numerical cal one of the things that makes numerical calculation difficult when you cannot predict where things are going to go bad in advance.